Hello, welcome to our Self Assessment 23 boot camp. My name is Paul Afshar and we've got Gordon uh, on the line as well. We're going to give people just a, a, another minute or so to join. I can see uh, the, 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 the number of people joining keeps them creeping up. So we're going to give people uh, a little bit of time. Um, but thank you for joining to those of you who are already online. Uh, we'll talk a bit about what we're going to talk about um, in this uh, short but focused lunchtime webinar um and uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions just to say everyone can answer questions sorry ask questions in the chat box um to the right of the screen we will do our very best to answer all of the questions on this webinar and those that we can't will or we don't have time for we'll follow up afterwards as well um i am gonna call it uh right now so we're gonna kick off so first of all, welcome uh, to people who've just joined. Um, this is the Self-Assessment 2023 Bootcamp for the UK. Uh, my name is Paul Afshar. I've been working at Awesome for a good year. Um, so I can give you hopefully a nice summary of, of what we do and how we can help you. I'm joined today by Gordon, um, who has a very fancy job title, don't you, Gordon? Well, I don't know. I wear so many hats. Uh, which, which, <laughs> one, which one are we going with today? I think a UK lead accountant for Awesome is certainly one of my titles. So uh, unless you have an alternative, Paul, which is a bit more entertaining than that one. I think I think lead accountant is um, very impressive. And Gordon, do you just want to give, a, for the benefit of our viewers, a very brief introduction to you, your role and your experience? OK, yeah, no worries at all. Hi, guys. Uh, so I'm Gordon. So I've been with Awesome ooh, about 14, 15 months myself. I have been in accountancy practice for 35 years, so showing my age a little there. I had my own practice for 14 years of that. Um, and so basically, I've got a pretty round all not all round knowledge, as it were, of accountancy, e-commerce, obviously, which is what Awesome focuses on very new, very raw for everybody in terms of the accountancy world. So we're learning still as we go as regards to that as how things work. But we are best placed to support you as regards to anything to do with Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. We have the T-shirt, as it were, in supporting our clients, which we've done really successfully over the past couple of years in the UK here. What a wonderful introduction. Um, Gordon is the man uh, at Awesome when it comes to accounting. Um, but of course, there are many more accountants that uh, work with um, with Gordon. Gordon, self-assessment. Now, um, just give us a very top line. What is it? Who needs to be worried or kind of bothered about self-assessment? And why is it in place? Just sort of give us a, a good sense of what this is actually is. Yeah, no worries. So self-assessment returns are put in place for basically the, the, the easiest way to think about it is anybody that receives a source of income outside of their salaried pairs you earn earnings needs to declare that income to HMRC. And the only way to do that is through a self-assessment return. There are many forms of income, obviously, that anybody can get, be a sole trader in business, be a dividend receiver. But that doesn't even need to be for your own company. You can receive you. All of us can buy and sell shares, as you know, and we can receive dividends. It, it comes a point at which they may need to be declared. You've got interest on bank accounts uh, that also can be done without any tax on them. So you have to declare the tax on those possibly. And then we're into the realms of rental property income, et cetera, et cetera. So there's many, many sources of income that if you think about it, that if you're Mr. HMRC, you would absolutely have no idea where that income, how you're earning any money unless you declare it. And it's your responsibility here in the UK to declare sources of income that HMRC have no record of. And there's a threshold, you, you mentioned it, but just to reiterate for our viewers, there's a threshold of earnings beyond which you need to start thinking about this, right? Isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, literally, the, the, there are little snippets to it. So you've got what we call a trading allowance of a £1,000. So everybody can have, do a little bit of, you know, you sell your sofa, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody's expecting you to declare that as a capital gain or anything along those lines. So you have a £1,000, give or take, for doing a little buy, a bit of buying and selling yourselves. Then, as I say, you're into the realms of div with dividends. In the current tax year, you've got £1,500 that are available to you tax-free. That drops in April right down to £1,000. So if you earn less than £1,000 in dividends from the 5th of April forward, 
then you would not need to declare it. If it's above that, you would need to declare it. And then higher rate tax earners obviously need to declare their tax return in income anyway. And a lot of people will have heard of the 31st of January deadline. We're currently on January 18th. The obvious question on people's minds is, OK, cool. What can I do and what should I do between you know now and the next 13 days? OK, so first and foremost, you've got to evaluate whether you should be registered for self-employment, self-assessment return, i.e. are you self-employed, et cetera, et cetera. Have you had those earnings? Have you done rental properties, et cetera? So what do you need to do? OK, so you've got, as I say, 13 days in which to register at HMRC to do an actual return. That's a straightforward online form that you can either do yourself or we also would assist you in how it's done. It's called an SA1. You would need to register to have a government gateway ID and password in order to access that form. Again, we can circumvent that by doing it through ourselves here at Awesome. We can help you with that and explain to you which boxes are required to be input, et cetera, et cetera. Once you get that, once you've completed the form, it takes hopefully about seven to 10 days. So these timescales are really tight. But within seven to 10 days, you should get what we call a unique tax reference number, a UTR number, if you've heard that terminology before. That UTR number basically means you're now logged in the system with HMRC to complete a tax return. If you don't complete that tax return, there are fines that are due. Those fines are £100 for the first three months of overdue. After that, it can jump considerably and then interest is charged on any tax that you're owed. So it's imperative you try to turn it around as quickly as possible. I'm hoping that most people on this call probably have got themselves sorted as regards to it. Or if you're panicking, the, the, the likelihood, don't forget that if you've taken out or started a new business since the 6th of April of 2022, you're not required to do your tax return until in the current tax year. So that will be period ending 5th of April 2023, so not due until January 2024. Confusing dates, absolutely. But like I say, we're here to help you in, in, in all of this. So feel free to contact us in any way if we can assist you. So the, the, the key thing to remember, I guess, Gordon, is that um, even though we're on January the 18th, there is still time, uh, clearly, um, so you don't miss the deadline and don't get a fine. Mm. Um, you can do it yourself. Of course, a lot of people do. Yeah. Just summarise, why would it be beneficial for people on this call and people listening to this? Why would it be beneficial for them to get help? So to come to a service like ours to do their self-assessment tax, tax return? <laughs> Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons, really. I, I guess, first and foremost, a lot of people find the form daunting. I know it says it's self-assessment return. The onus is on the individual to complete it, obviously. But um, it is a daunting form. It's not particularly straightforward. It, obviously, we as accountants and any accountant are there to advise you. you know, I, I'm, I'm talking broadly across any accountant will and should be able to assist you in this form. And the reason you would go to accountant is, A, uh, peace of mind that it's been filled in correctly but also you know there, there, there's a number of options where expenses could be claimed that you just wouldn't be aware of and th th there's so many of those it's difficult for, if you're going to ask me what well, well, like what it's a little bit difficult and it would be specific to the the, the um, income that's been received and then as I say there are many options but uh, the, the, the strap line I've always used and, and I hark back to my own accountancy practice Dave and I would always say to clients you know if, if you come to do a self-assessment with myself then if I can't save you at least my fee I haven't gained anything and I think that's a, a, a good rule of thumb to work with that if we can't save you a couple of quid then it, it, you know we're not really doing our jobs. There should be every reason that accountant will save you some money as opposed to you doing it yourself online. Uh, I read an interesting figure, actually, um, not too recently, but I think it's probably even higher now, that the average UK business, so these are kind of mainly small businesses in a, in a lot of respects, mainly sort of solo solopreneurs as well, so sort of mm. sole traders. The average UK business is missing out on £17,500 in tax deductibles. So these are expenses you can reclaim or um, tax deductibles that you're entitled to. That's actually a huge amount for a small business, um, isn't it? Has is, is that, is that been your experience generally? Yes, I know so it's phenomenal, you know, like I say, and they all add up. It really is specific to what that income source is, but there will always be 
notional expenses that can be brought in and, and it's totally liable expenses we don't stick a finger in the air and go let's call it that and and that will do as a number you know the, the, these are proven methods to show where money can be saved and explain to each individual client what's relevant to them and how we can save them money precisely um and i, I don't want to put you on the spot um, but you're going to but i'm going to um, <laughs> Just just give us just a single example, Gordon, of something that um, either a lot of people who are self-employed or uh, sole traders or small businesses um, don't know is a reclaimable expense. Well, I tell you, I, I think one of the, 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 the I'm going to cover two little bits in this. The first one is people forget that, say you're doing e-commerce, for example, and you've gone a couple of years back, you've gone and bought your Mac to work on or whatever it might be. People forget that actually you're using that as a business tool now. So there we are. There's a, there's a cost that wasn't, that's not even the forefront of your mind. You're immediately thinking Amazon fees I've got to pay for, postage, all those kind of things. You haven't actually thought about the, the actual tool you're using to do the business. It's a straightforward one. Loads of people miss it. So invariably somebody sat at a desk, at a chair at a, on, with that PC sat on it. All of these are costs that nobody thinks of that are totally allowable. So... And then, as I say, then you've, that's one side of it. And then the other side of it is things like use of home as office. So people obviously, so many of us working from home, you and I are examples of that, obviously. Um, you know, and that's the claimable expense, depending on how much of the square footage you're using of, the, of your house, flat, whatever it might be. There is claimable expenditure to go against these things. And as I say, these are all allowable expenses. This is not something that I'm making up or any other accountants. You know, these are allowable expenses that you won't, as an individual, necessarily understand that can be brought into the equation to save you some tax. That makes absolute sense. Um, Gordon, we've got a few questions come through on, on the chat. I'm just going to take them in, in turn as they've come. Okay. Um, Melissa Hurst, thank you for your question, Melissa. Melissa says um, she's a new self-employment advisor. Well, congratulations, Melissa, um, on that. Um, I wonder if you had any suitable resources or reliable links or information for me to pass on. Um, to unemployed people starting self-assessment in your business, please. Uh, I can uh, perhaps help out a little bit here, mm. um, Melissa. So uh, go to our website, I would say, um, awesome.com. Um, there's this, a specific section called resources. And on there, you'll find all of the relevant blog articles, which you can search for um, topics like tax or um, accounting or starting a business. Um, and in addition to that, we have um, a whole bunch of downloadable guides um, and also uh, videos of, of kind of discussions and webinars like this as well. So that's all accessible to you. It's all free. Um, specifically on the point of someone who's been unemployed and starting self-employment, Gordon, are there any um, things to be aware of there, or is it just broadly the same as sort of someone It's, who, it's yeah. broadly the same. I, I mean, I, I, as... as dreadfully dull as it is hmrc's website is as good a place to start as any as well with these things it certainly as much as it is very legislation driven it will give you some pointers in in order for somebody that's been unemployed previously etc but th th there's no different treatment for somebody who's been unemployed and starting afresh understood and that's really helpful natalia orchard orchard sorry um, I am employed and have a rental property. Um, uh, congratulations again, Natalia. Yeah. Um, I also have a separate pension fund, not through employment. So this is obviously additional to the one presumably you have, Natasha, from your employer. Do I need to declare that extra pension fund, just thinking of possibly getting some money back from HMRC to offset my rental property tax due? So I guess there's two parts there, Gordon. Does she need yeah. to declare and how does she balance it with property rental? Yes, yeah, so absolutely right. So there's a section in your self-assessment return where you are making contributions toward a pension scheme. So you uh, you would put them in there. It depends on and on the pension itself whether the tax relief is being claimed by the pension provider or whether she would be claiming it separately. So they're not taking up that because there is relief there if if it's not being taken up by the pension provider. And so in that instance, it would be offset against the rental income. Understood. Well, and Natalia, hopefully that answers your question. But um, if you want to ask more questions, then, then please do continue mm. putting them in. OK, we've got um, actually a few more questions. Wow. OK, this is good. We like this. We like interactive sessions. Mohammed Khan, I'm self-employed, working as a private hire driver on Uber and other apps. 
Um, first time he needs to do a tax self-assessment. How can he do it himself? He has a UTR um, number and an account, presumably with HMRC. Well, Mohammed, it sounds very much like you've you've taken the the sort of the the biggest step. Gordon, any um, additional advice from Mohammed? No, there isn't really. As I say, you, you've got all the tools to get. Just go ahead and do it. You're just going to have to log into your government gateway and complete a self-assessment return. As I say. Um, it's as straightforward as that. As an Uber driver, it should be fairly simple for you to fill in. But like I say, the other option is come to us and um, we'll be able to assist you in in um, probably saving you a few more pounds rather than you doing it yourself. But have a go. Good advice. Um, Zahra Bhatt has got the question of the hour, I think. Oh, um, gosh. Are there any allowable expenses against dividends? None whatsoever, unfortunately. Dividends are what they are. Um, so no allowable expenses against that, I'm afraid. Okay, Natasha, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Sorry, the only bonus the with that is, obviously, with dividends, you pay no Nash insurance. It's only tax. So yes, there's the offset for you. Yasmin asks, uh, well, Yasmin says, uh, she's se she's employed part-time and self-employed, working from home uh, uh, as part of a rental she shares with her partner. Um, what can I deduct from my taxes and how do I need to justify the deductions when submitting my self-assessment? So I guess that's in relation to working from home. Yes, yeah, so I guess we, it, there's a little bit of what if it is it she does from home. Does she have a spare room that's full of boxes of uh, goods that she's selling? So there's some um, storage space that she can claim. If it's a case of she's working on her laptop, then, as I say, there's some light heat and power that she can claim, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it's literally, it's a difficult one to generically say claim X, Y, and Z. It really is client specific to a certain extent. And, and to drill down into what they do, what, what home they're sat in, as to what's achievable and what we can claim. But in the main, yeah, you're looking at sort of some light and heat, some phone bill, some um, internet costs, and some storage costs, I would say, would probably cover it off. And um, yeah, literally, I think that's probably going to do for her. But again, if it's something that she wants to discuss further, then obviously point her our direction and we'll see what we can do. We'll do. Uh, and Yasmin has just clarified she, she works as a translator. Um, so actually all of the things that you've just outlined, Gordon, are particularly relevant to mm. um, Yasmin as well. Yeah. Uh, Becky J, uh, a very easy to answer question. How do I arrange a call with Gordon? Well, we can do that for you, Becky, but you do actually have a, another question. Um, so Be Becky has a, a specific situation. Uh, she says a previous accountant has closed her sole trader account in 2014. She opened uh, a business in 2014, but it closed in 2022. Now she's just started a new business. She's only ever been on PAYE and has no other income. Does she need to go back uh presumably to hmrc or to re-register as a sole trader now so it's a bit, a bit complex but let's take it in two parts so yeah. i guess part one is she closed her old business she's opening a new business part two is how should she be reporting that to hmrc i guess what she needs to find out first and foremost with this one will be uh, did she get a uh, and again i probably do need to have her on a call at some point but did she have an original utr number if she has an original utr number that unique tax reference that i talked about at the start if she had one, it still it will still exist. You can't get two of them. They'll either close the case on it and leave it as dormant, or it's still live. So there's some work to be done with that one to have a little dig in to see what HMRC have as her status and take it from there is, is the honest answer with that one. Okay, well, Becky has confirmed that she does still have the UTR number. But Becky, I think the um, important thing is to get you on a call with Gordon. So we'll organise that um, afterwards mm -hmm. as well. But thank you for your uh, questions so far. And do keep them coming in because we've got a little bit of time left as well. Um, Gordon, I want to turn back to, well, like, funny turn of phrase, turn back to looking ahead. So we're obviously here to talk about um, self-assessment, the impending self-assessment decline on the 31st of uh, January um, for yeah. this webinar. But beyond that, you know, self-assessment is one aspect of <clears throat> getting taxes and business finances right. I want to ask you a two-part question. The first part is, um, are there changes um, in, I guess, the UK tax regime that, uh, that are recent and that we should be aware of. I know there were th a few things in the autumn statement that people might not be aware of. Uh, and number two, um, how can people get set up right for 2023 when it comes to tax beyond self-assessment? Uh, so I, th 
again, all of these things, as generically as I can talk, they're all going to be specific to each individual on what works best for them. That, that is the key to uh, a good accountant and, and taking into consideration each individual's tax position. It's all relevant to it. So it depends on your circumstances. If we're looking at somebody at startup, that this is invariably with the clients that come to Awesome have a full-time job and are going to begin doing a, a, an entrepreneurial route with e-commerce, for example. So if you take those sort of clients in isolation, they've already got a PAYE salary coming in. So obviously, when we're looking at how do we set them up to make it tax efficient for them going forward, first and foremost, we've got to look at this is all about getting money to us in our own pockets. That's what we want. You know, we're in business to make money so that we can have it for ourselves. If we look at the sole trader route for somebody, if they're already a PAYA salaried person, then they are already had their taxable allowance used up. So if you think about anybody that has a salary of 25,000, for example, 12,572 pounds of that currently is tax free. That's the standard coding that everybody's seen in their pay slips. You see it says one, two, five, seven, L. That is exactly what that means. So if somebody's earning 25K on a, working for somebody and then starts their own business, then every single penny of that profit that they make on that business is taxed and national insurance is paid on it. So you're looking at a total contribution. If we, if we keep on basic rate taxpayer, about 31, 32% in total being paid across to HMRC for any profits uh, on that. So that's a tax and national insurance contribution. So then going back a step, if they are an employee, perhaps a better option is to start their new venture as a limited company. You've heard this loads of time. People go, get a limited company, best route to take. And the very simple reason for that is company tax is just tax. There's no national insurance. So any profits are just susceptible to tax. So 19% corporation tax, no national insurance. So already you're making a saving on your profits by keeping your PAYE income as an individual separate from your new business. So that is why we often say to people, leave your, leave your uh, payroll, PAYE bits where it is, and start your new company as a new company rather than a sole trader because of the tax breaks. There's then other stuff that can be done in a limited company that can help pension contributions, et cetera, et cetera. And it be, opens up a whole raft into how do we become more tax efficient for that person going forward? What can we do for them? And that is really why we look at these options when it comes to when you're in startup, do we go down the route of limited companies, et cetera? And the basic ones are those. You get 19% on corporation tax. And as I said earlier, with dividends, you get a dividend amount tax free. So you can draw money from your own company, a certain element tax free. And those are the real basics, if you like, on some taxation. And, and, and that's hugely useful information to um, understand. And, and just to get it right, Gordon, let's say in a circumstance of, uh, I guess, a lot of people on this webinar, perhaps you have already registered your company, um, but it's not a limited company. You haven't registered it as a limited company. What are the options for you to either change the nature of that registration or to get the benefits that you just outlined? That's so straightforward. So if you're currently trading as a sole trader, you can transfer your business as what we call the terminology of going concern. So you can roll it into a limited company. That's easy enough. You register your company at company's house. There's a charge for doing that. Um, and all you need to do is come up with a company name that doesn't exist. And you can go from there. We can do all again. We can do all of this for you at Awesome. And make this a lot simpler for you and, and take the worry and stress out of doing it. But like I say, I, I'd be wrong not to suggest that you can do it yourself online by going to company's house and registering a company and following the steps in there. But I believe we do a few offers currently to help you with company registration and set up here at Awesome. And as I say, we are experts in this area so we are there to help you and make sure that when you do set up that you do it right 
We've got a few more questions that are coming, Gordon, and mm. uh, I want to take them um, in turn as well. Um, <clears throat> one is, how do I claim for a room I use as my office working from home? I, I think you sort of answered this one, um, but just to, I guess, to summarise and reiterate, you can claim for working from home, right? You can indeed, yeah, yeah. You've just, you've just, you've got to look at the bills and and and, a, and do an equation that works out roughly what would cover the cost of working from home. Understood. That's very helpful advice. Uh, and a question, an interesting question from um, Jose Lopez. Is there a rule of thumb to work out how much to include as allowable expense from working from home? So he says in his uh, situation, until now, I've used a third of my monthly bill for phone and Wi-Fi um, uh, as, as a reclaimable expense. And I read somewhere um, about six pounds per month for electricity. Is that right? Again, it, 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 it's in the main the answer. Probably the answer is, is, is yes to that. In the main, you've got to you've got to be sensible with these numbers. You, you've got to look at you know, if you're renting a property and it costs you a thousand pounds a month, and your bills are another fifteen hundred pounds a month, etc. Et what HMRC will look at is okay. So you're saying you've got fifteen hundred pounds worth of expenditure related to your property. What element of that can you claim for your business? Well, they're going to look at how many hours a day are you working, how many days a week are you working in there, and come up with a formula based on that. It's no good at the end of the day going, well, I, re I reckon I'm a, a third of that is absolutely fine. Is, is, is a third allowable based on the fact that, as I say, you might only do two days a week or whatever. So it, it's a little, little bit more complex than that. And also, I think the reality is you've got to look at your numbers as well. It's got to be a reasonable claim because there's no point in creating a loss position because you on your business because you over claim in terms of your use of home so it's being sensible At the end of the day remember mr hmrc is is quite entitled to call you into his office sit in front of his big desk and try and explain why we've claimed these various expenses if we can sit in front of him and confident that we are right to claim them then we're all well and good if we think it's not really going to work this then there's your answer almost in terms of how do you work out what's claimable what's not could you sit in front of mr hmrc and argue that that claim is reasonable i think that's a very helpful rule of thumb uh, and i guess underlines the benefit of having someone like you or indeed awesome or, or any accountant mm. um do this for you because yeah. rather than me or the viewer um having to sit in front of mr hmrc we, we put you there gordon and you can do oh it. my yes. favorite task obviously <laughs> <laughs> um Rachel asks, how do I calculate national insurance if I am part-time employed and have a non-profit making sole trade? Sorry, is a non-profit making sole trader. OK, so if you're an individual that's a sole trader, then you pay class two national insurance contributions, which works out about £158.60 a month, which is sorry, not a month, a year, um, which is compulsory. Anything above that, it is related to profits but if it's a non-profit making organization then there shouldn't be anything else but if she's classed as self-employed then we she will need to make the contribution of 158 pounds 60 per annum very helpful um we've got a, a follow-up question from zahra Bhatt. um is an if an insurance claim is received do i have to declare it on self-assessment uh, an insurance claim for what? If if it's a loss of earnings, the answer would be yes. If it's a you've broken your laptop or somebody's nicked your laptop or something like that, no. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, Jana, Jana or Yana, apologies, uh, Jana or Yana for mispronouncing your name, as I'm sure I have. Can a landlord claim for for working from home? So I guess in this situation, the main source of income is I am a landlord and I'm working from a property that presumably I don't rent out. In that situation, what's the what's the deal? Well, absolutely, because you've still got to maintain the property. So again, it's not going to be huge amounts of money because they would argue, what would you be? doing all day long in terms of without wanting to sound rude to any landlord the reality is you're not sat in front of a, a, a laptop all day long or your computer all day long working and and generating bits but still ultimately there will be work to be done in terms of uh managing the property however that whatever form that takes so the expense is related there too but again it's it's all with that rule of thumb if you think that you could sit there and claim that 
you spend seven hours a day maintaining that property and these are the costs that, that are relevant to that, then go with that. We've got um, just a few more minutes left, so I'm going to try and squeeze in the remaining questions. Rosie asks um, if uh, she uses her Oyster card um, to travel to work. I'm presuming this is outside of her kind of uh, employee's job and as a sort of uh, sole trader or a limited company. Can she claim the entire cost of her Oyster card as an allowable expense uh, for her business, as a lot of it is travel related? It's only relevant to the the business that she's doing. If there's an element of she's doing a nine to five job and using the Oyster card for that, then obviously you wouldn't be able to claim the full amount. So it would only be relevant to, and it would come into the percentage of how much of those journeys she makes with that Oyster card are related to her own business as opposed to her work travel in terms of her salary job. Understood. Um, and final question from Natalia. I donate to several UK charities. Shall I declare them as well? And she just clarified that they are registered charities. Yes. Yeah, so we all get gift aid relief. So normally whenever you make donations, they tend to, on an annual basis, send you a statement saying, thank you for your contributions over X amount of time. You're entitled to claim tax relief to the tune of X and Y. And yeah, we all get tax relief in terms of gift aid. Good to know. Uh, and this will be the final question, Niraj. Thank you for your question, because we're just bang on to time. Um, on a tax return, it's, it's actually a very good question, because I don't think necessarily a lot of people know about the technicalities of this. Do you have to send bank statements and spreadsheets as proof? No, none whatsoever. Literally complete the boxes. They want no other information at this time. Fingers crossed they never, ever ask for it also, because it means you're being investigated if they do. They take you at face value for the boxes that you complete. If they require any information, they will follow it up. But uh, 99.9 times out of 100, just all will be sufficient will be the numbers in the boxes. Perfect. So I guess the summary of uh, what we've been discussing is uh, you've still got time, <laughs> clearly, just... to, uh, these are seven, although it's, it's very tight, mm. uh, and you've still got time to uh, get us uh, and Gordon and Awesome to help you do that. Um, it can get quite complicated, particularly if you have a number of different sources of additional income outside of your main employment. Um, and that's why you may need the help of um, an accountant or a sort of self-assessment expert. Um, there are a whole bunch of things that you are entitled to claim uh, as claimable expenses or tax deductibles. You may not know about them. It's always good to sort of seek out expert advice. And of course, uh, we have the awesome um, uh, resource library, awesome.com. Uh, where people can find out a whole bunch more information on the different sort of situations and contacts that they may be um, looking at. Gordon, any final words, any final bits of uh, advice um, or tips for our viewers when it comes to self-assessment? Um, yeah, I would say, uh, literally, I, I would trust an expert. I, 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 as much as, yes, I'm an accountant and I'm a fee-earning accountant from doing self-assessment return, I, I stand by my statement of earlier that if whichever accountant you find, if whatever they charge you, if they can't get you that back, then they're not doing their job properly. Well, either that or they're massively overcharging you. But in the main, you know, we are there for understanding what's claimable to help you get more back than you would do as an individual. So I would say they are quite daunting forms. Use, use a specialist to, to help you with it. It, it. it would be worth it. Great stuff. Um, thank you to everyone who's joined. Thank you for your questions. Hopefully we would answer yeah, them. Thank you. Um, head over to awesome.com if we haven't, because you'll be able to find a lot of the free resources there. And you'll also be able to ask us further questions and potentially booking calls with um, Gordon. And just to say for those who joined a little bit late um, and for those who've been here since the beginning, the recording um, of this session is available and will be sent to you. So thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.